Reed Demers of the Angels joining us right now on FT Live for the first time. Reed, great to see you, man. How's the offseason going? Yeah, nice to see you guys. Um, it's going well. Um, can't complain. Um, nice weather. It's Body feels good. Arm feels good. I'm ready to go. Where are you? Uh, I'm down in uh, Jupiter, Florida. Ah, I was there last weekend. Not a bad place. Hit the grouper for hit the grouper on Friday night. You know. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey Reed, have you gotten a chance to talk to or spend some time with your new skipper, who was on our show for a half hour yesterday, just ecstatic as can be, and feeling like he's going to bring a different energy to this ball club to get him back to the playoffs? Yeah, he's awesome. Um, I actually had a phone call with him um, when he first announced it, um, and. It, I mean, it's awesome the the way he talks about what he's going to do and everything that involves being like a good team. It's I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, so I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I know a lot of the guys are looking forward to it, and I'm ready to head out to Arizona to see uh see what he's all about and get things going. He made me want to run through a wall after talking to him uh, yesterday. But yeah. what what did you tell him? Because he told us that he doesn't go into it telling you he's talking to Rendon today you know about you know what's it going to take for him to get onto the field that's what he wants from him but he said he listens so what did you tell Wash yeah I just told him that I'm going to show up to spring training ready to go I obviously had a lot of stuff that I needed to work on um last year wasn't the best year um so I came into this off season um having having certain points um that I wanted to work on and um, so far, everything's going well. Um, I feel like I'm in a good spot, and like I said, I'm going to show up to spring training ready to go. What are those? What what is what does ready to go mean? What what do you what what does that mean for you? Do you have goals? Do you have number goals set for yourself personally? Yeah, um, for me, it's just obviously staying healthy. Um, that's the main thing. But at the same time, it's um, competing. Um, I always set a goal every year. Um, whether it starts um, or games won. For me, um, one of my goals is to win 20 games. Um, that's always a goal going into the year. Um, and I feel like the last couple of years, guys have, I don't know, have gone away from it, but it's not as talked about as much anymore. Um, but winning 20 games is a huge, huge deal. So for me, it's winning 20 games. Obviously, the stuff I'm working on, um, I think will allow me to, be a little bit easier on my body, um, getting into my legs a little bit better. Um, my last year, I know I struggled with walks. Um, so I tweaked a couple of things, my mechanics to allow me to go more towards home plate, um, more efficiently, um, and not spinning off. So as far as, or right now, I'd say everything's going more towards home plate. Everything's um, in a good direction, so it's easier to get the ball over the plate. Um, last year, I was spinning off, so it's a little bit harder. Um, so it's just small things I'm trying to tweak, and uh, hopefully um, the re results show. Don't you know wins don't matter? Ask Scott Braun. He says wins don't matter. 20 wins doesn't mean shit, so I don't know why you're wasting your time with that. Yeah, goal. team wins. Scott, team Scott wins, will be yeah. like, yeah, pfft. Yeah, why would you try to win 20 games? You go out there and try and lose 20 games. I mean, what How about this? I got to follow up. Reed, what's more important to you? Your record when you pitch um, for your team or your personal win-loss record. Do you know what I'm saying? So Don't they go hand-in-hand? Yeah. Hand. If he goes out and wins 20 games, that means his team won at least 20 times he started. That's not always the case, though, if he leaves the game, though, and kept them in the game. So if he goes 20-10, and 10, that's better. Is that a worse or better season, Reed, than going 8-8? Eight and eight? Oof. Uh, and your team goes. Your team goes. Okay, so your team goes twenty and ten in your starts. Yep. But you yep. go twenty and ten. But only, or you go. Your team goes twenty and ten. You go eight and eight. Which one personally is going to get you paid more? <laughs> I mean, the one that's going to get you paid more is getting twenty ones myself. Thank um, you. Fuck off, Scott. <laughs> no, actually, the answer is neither. Because <laughs> any front office you honestly, talk to will say we don't pay on on dubs on individual win loss record for pitchers. Yeah, but if he has twenty, if he wins twenty games. Personally, that means he's going deeper into games, so he's getting more strikeouts, probably less walks, less hits given up, more innings pitched. All the stats are piling up. So that's especially when he goes to arbitration, that's what they look at. They don't they don't care about the other stuff. They're looking at cumulative stats over years. Yeah, I mean, th I think getting deep in the games is key. Um, obviously, it's 
less stress on the relievers, but at the same time, you're going deeper and get in games, given your team a better chance to win. Um, and obviously, if you're going deep in the games, um, things are going well. Um, so that's always a goal. Um, but at the same time, like, obviously, you want your team to win. Um, I, would, I would much rather have our team win and put the team in a position to win than worrying about my goals, obviously. Obviously, I have goals, but at the same time, I'm, I'm rooting for the team to win. I, that's the main goal. Okay, Reed, who's going to be the big bopper in the lineup for you, aside from, obviously, Trout this season? Because you're missing, you know, 40-plus – the last several years, you know who I'm talking about. Right. Um, hey, I, I think we got a good squad. We're going to be very young, um, so it's going to be interesting, but we got some, We got a good young core um, that not a whole lot of people know about. Um, we got Ohapi. Ohapi. I think Ohapi's going to do have a very good year. Um, same with Neto. Um, and a lot of people forget about Joe Adele and Mickey Moniak. Um, those two guys... I mean, they they are who they are for a reason, and um, there's a lot more to come. What are you gonna miss from from Shohei and the, in the pitcher relationship, or maybe you didn't have a pitcher relationship with him, like he was just another teammate that did some awesome stuff. Yeah, obviously Shohei's <laughs> unbelievable. Um, the way he went about his business was crazy. Um, I don't know how. I don't know how he did both, to be honest with you, um, but he made it look easy. Um, on the pitching side, it, watching his, he doesn't really talk a whole lot. He's very quiet, keeps to himself, but just you learn a lot from just watching him, um, What the way he goes about his bullpens um, and in the weight room, on, honestly. Um, so that's the part I'm going to miss the most, um, that I learned the most, is just watching his bullpens, um, watching him play catch. Um just everything's in rhythm, everything's on time, and he's working on specific stuff. He's not just throwing to the catcher, um, preparing for the game. He's actually working on stuff um, so that when he gets to the game, he knows he'll be there. I talked to somebody that was involved with the team last year, and they said with him not pitching this year, he may actually hit better than he did last year. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I do agree with that. Um he, I know he always had a lot of blisters, and that's partly because of his batting gloves. Obviously, his hands are moist, but, um, but I mean, just him focusing on hitting for one like a whole year that's, I mean, scary. It's he already hit well when he was a pitcher, and just taking out a whole other position that's a lot like it's demanding, um, and you really have to focus on it. Just focusing on hitting for a whole year, it's, I mean, he could put up some crazy numbers. If he hits 60 home runs this year, would you, and I know you said he's quiet and, you know, it's, it's hard to get inside his head, could you see him not pitching again? No, no. I think he'll always be a pitcher. Um, he loves it. Um, I don't know what which one he likes more, but I know pitching, He's he, he likes pitching a lot. Um, because there's always stuff to work on. Um, as a, there's always stuff to work on hitting too, but for on the pitching side, there's always things that could be changed, um, whether it's pitch grips, making stuff better, or just mechanically. It's um, but he he's all, he's into that, so I think he'll always he'll always pitch. Hey Reed, take me through where you were at and what your reaction was when you saw the news that he signed. Of course, there's the money component and that, you know, your team, the angels weren't officially out until he announced that we didn't know for sure. I think there, there was a pretty good inclination that he wasn't going to sign back there, but you didn't know. So what was going through your mind that day? Yeah, it was actually crazy. It was, uh, I just got engaged the the day before. So uh, (laughs) my fiance and I were down in, down in the keys, um, just enjoying our time. And I saw the, saw the news on Twitter Um, and, I mean, we pretty much knew he wasn't going to come back to the Angels. Um, so we were just waiting to see what he did. And then we saw how much it was, and we are like, holy crap, like, that's crazy. Um, we expected him to get a lot, but not that much, um, especially after um, getting TJ. We didn't know how much that would 
affect things, but obviously it didn't affect much. Um, but yeah, I mean, the first person I, I, I texted was Patrick Sandoval and Griffin Canning. Like, did you, did you guys see that? And they're like, yeah, how crazy is that? So, I mean, I pretty much stopped everything I was doing and just scrolled through Twitter to see what everybody was saying. Is it weird that he's a Dodger? Do you think Angels fans are going to be super pissed yeah. off and you'll hear from them at some point, you know, this season when you're at the ballpark where they're like, what the hell? Um, I mean, it's definitely weird. You're going to see him in the blue and white. Um, but at the same time, it's you can't get mad at him. It's his career. He gets to do whatever he wants once you hit free agency. So it's, I mean, I'm hoping for the best for him just because he's an awesome dude. Um, obviously, he's going to be across town now, kind of the rivalry. Um, so I don't think the fans are very happy, but at the same time, you can't really – can't be mad at him. You, you're gonna first at bat. You're gonna freaking bow tie him or what? First one, you know, <laughs> little little, yeah, a little yeah. up and in. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I I don't know because I get some going. You gotta. You gotta. I don't know. I don't know what the game plan is yet. I've watched him yeah. for a couple of years gotta, now. So you got to get to I that curveball, yours. So you know, you know, up and in and lowing away with that curveball. Yeah, you gotta keep it a secret. <laughs> um are there any pros i guess to a player like that leaving because you did have to kind of build the team around him including you know six-man rotation and all of that so will there be a change on that front did you get caught up in that and want to pitch say every fifth day and sometimes it had to be adjusted or often had to be adjusted to be able to accommodate the best player on the planet uh, yeah, it did have to be adjusted quite a bit, um, just depending on whether he felt like he could pitch on the sixth day or not, uh, or seventh day. So it did have to be adjusted quite a bit. So you weren't on a steady routine. Um, one day or one week you could pitch on six days, next week you could pitch on seven, sometimes eight. Um, and then sometimes if he didn't pitch, we, we would go on five days. So there will be more of a routine, um, for the, the starting staff um, so that's going to be nice um, at the same time um, I mean we've never pitched on uh, five days so um, I know a lot of guys want to pitch on five days so I think that's what our plan is this year so that's going to be nice um, staying on that routine every five days um, and six days is a long time it's a couple bullpens in between and just trying to stay ready for that long in between starts it gets kind of difficult so that less the less of a Less of a weight in between starts is going to be nice. I like that. Um, getting some fan comments. One said, uh, hot take Mickey Moniak 2024 All-Star. Do you have What are your thoughts on that? And do you have anyone else on the Angels that, that we should highlight, that we should be talking more about this coming season? Because if you think about it, yes, Trout's obviously there and coming back. But, you know, the attention has, has been so, so laser focused on Shohei there. It's going to feel different and you're going to have less media around. <laughs> it's going to be more yeah, chill. That's, yeah, that's true. Um, no, I agree. Mickey, I mean, he had an unbelievable year last year. Um, I think he's just going to keep getting better and better. Um, so I would not be surprised if he was an all star. Um, and we have a lot of dark horses this year. We got Zach Noto, Logan O'Hoppy, um, Patrick Sandoval, and I mean, I could go on and on. It's just a lot of guys that have kind of flown under the radar the last couple of years. Um, not a whole lot of people know about, but we got some serious talent uh, um, in the young guys. All right. So I'm going to read off a list of guys here. Shanwell, Neto, you, Joyce, Silseth, Bachman. Like, can you guys, you guys don't even have combined the number of years in the minor leagues that I had. Did the Angels move you guys all too fast? Like, do you think that's part of part of it? Is, is there a benefit to moving faster besides the fact that you're a big leaguer? And I know you went to a big league. You went to a minor league organization when you, you know, you went to school in Louisville. So are you moved too fast? I mean, those are all guys that were drafted since 2021. No, I agree with you. It, um, it is challenging, um, especially I thought I moved fast. Um, with a year and a half, and then all these other guys in the past draft or these last or last couple drafts. I mean, they've been up 
within months. So that I mean, it's, we they do move very fast through the system, um, and it is difficult because I mean, for me, I mean, it took. I feel like I'm still not fully ready, uh, or I am fully ready, but I feel like there's it takes time. Um, if you know what I'm, I'm trying to say, um, and so the first year. I mean, I struggled. It was it was hard, and it took some time to get get comfortable and get get used to everything. Um, I think that's with a lot of guys. It takes some time, and not having that experience in the minor leagues is tough at times because that's where you kind of get used to your routine and how you go about your business, and just kind of get used to all the travel. And then by the time you get up to the big leagues, then you're you're ready for it, and you have your routine set. You have you're used to the travel. Um, so learning all that up in the big leagues is not easy. Um, obviously there's some pros to it. You're getting paid earlier in the big leagues. Um, but at the same time, you, you really have to figure out everything you would figure out in the minor leagues up in the big leagues. And that's not very easy. Have you talked to your pitching coach, Barry Enright? I have. Yes. Has he told you how good he is at golf yet? <laughs> I, he hasn't told me specifically, but I've heard a lot of stories and, I feel like every time I talk to him, he's on the golf course. So I've, I have a good feeling. Okay. All right. Cause I'm just, I'm just giving you a heads up right now. If he challenges you to a game, make sure you get a lot of strokes. I, and I mean, a <laughs> lot of strokes. Cause he is, you know, people talk, you know, they talk about Clippard and they talk about Jeff McNeil and they talk about John Smoltz and right. Apparently smokes them all. So just FYI. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I might be asking for a decent amount then. Cause I need them. Where, where are we playing there? Yeah. Where's that? What's? Did you what see the video we showed of you swinging? What was it? No, I didn't see it. Oh, uh, it was a video of you taking some wax. Instagram. It oh, it was, yeah, Instagram. that's a that's a that's here in Jupiter, at Abacoa. Ah, uh, okay. Hey, oh. I don't know if you can see it now, but yeah, a little lefty action. Yeah, tough swing. That's a bad swing. <laughs> but I'm, I'm wondering yeah. why. Okay, like that's a cool pick. Like why? We, why are we posting this pick? Like why are we posting a pick of you in a rough? Like we can't be <laughs> like only only picks in the fairway. Like get a nice picture. Even just drop a ball and have whoever have the fiance take a pick in the fairway. Hey, you gotta prove that you're human. Yeah, everybody yeah. falls down. You gotta get back up. You know, Instagram's all about fakeness. <laughs> <laughs> that is New true. trend. Real read. Well, Reed, hope you had a good time, man. It was great to have you on. Um, enjoy the rest of the off season in Jupiter, and then we'll catch you in spring training, all right? Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it.